All right, we will get started. Good afternoon, everybody. Appreciate you all for coming out. I'm Michael Grady, TV play-by-play -play announcer for the Minnesota Timberwolves, and I want to thank all of you in attendance again for coming out for this special occasion as we excited, again, really excited about welcoming the newest additions of the Twin Cities and the Minnesota Timberwolves. And uh, the Wolves have added to their talented core by acquiring forward Leonard Miller, the 33rd overall pick in the 2023 NBA draft, and drafting guard Jalen Clark with the 53rd overall selection. Let's give him some love. A couple nuggets on both guys. Leonard Millard spent last season with the NBA G League Ignite, where he averaged 17 points, led the NBA G League Ignite with 10.1 rebounds per game. Miller also tallied a steal and a block in a little under 30 minutes per contest in 38 games during the 2022-23 campaign. Miller set an Ignite team record with 21 rebounds to go along with 18 points on 7 of 9 shooting on March 12th versus the Texas Legends. He tallied 17 double doubles and improved his averages to nearly 21 points and 13 rebounds per game following the All-Star break. A native of Toronto, Miller represented Team World at the 2022 Nike Hoop Summit and was named the 21-22 BioSteel Canadian Boys Player of the Year at Fort Erie International Academy in Ontario. He also participated in the NBA Rising Stars and NBA League Next Up game at the 23 All-Star Weekend in Salt Lake City. As for Jalen Clark, he was named the 22-23 Naismith Defensive Player of the Year, the 22-23 NABC Defensive Player of the Year, and the 22-23 Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year, UCLA's first Defensive Player of the Year winner since Russell Westbrook in the 07-08 season. He averaged 13 points, two assists, and a Pac-12 leading 2.6 steals per game, tied for fourth best in the nation. Additionally, the Riverside, California native was named to the 22-23 All-Pac-12 second team and was a two-time Pac-12 All-Defensive Team honoree. I'll tip off today's press conference with a few questions for the group, followed by questions from our local media members, starting with Chris Hine from the Star Tribune. For media members to ask questions, please wait until you are called upon and then identify yourself with your name and your media affiliation. All right, first question is for team president Tim Connolly. What are you most looking forward to about what each guy can bring to the Timberwolves this season? I think um, just toughness, competitiveness, and um, as people, uh, you guys should pat yourselves on the back and pat you know, your support system on the back. Um, everyone swears by these guys in terms of what they bring to the building every day, positivity, um, you know, high IQ, um, just guys that you want to be around. So I think um, we got two of the most competitive, toughest guys in the draft, and if you'd have told us when the night started that we were going to walk with uh, Jalen and Leonard, we wouldn't believe you. So we're, we feel unbelievably fortunate and um, excited to have these guys in Minnesota. Happy to have you both. Leonard uh, was there on draft night, saw that, that warm embrace, the emotion that came out when you hugged Deputy Commissioner Mark Tatum. What were your emotions? What did it mean to you to hear your name called Thursday? Um, I mean, it meant the world. You know, it's something I've always dreamed of and worked towards my whole life. And to really hear my name called and see uh, all the work I put in uh, pay off, um, I, there's just a lot of emotions that came with it. And um, to hear my name uh, called by such a prestigious organization like this is like, it means the world. Um, I'm just ready, ready to get in and work. And um, it was just truly a blessing. Thank you, Leonard. All right, Jalen. What do you hope, what are you excited about bringing to this Timberwolves organization? Uh, just my junkyard defensive mentality. I'm the kid that does everything that nobody else wants to do. I'm the kid running through walls, diving on loose balls, um, picking up the other team's best offensive player, uh, looking to add my three ball and a little bit more of a handle. And yeah, I think I could be a, a big plug in piece for this organization. All right, we're going to open it up for questions now. Chris Hine up first. Just a reminder that this is being broadcast live, so wait until the microphone gets to you to answer, ask your question. Chris? For Leonard, it seemed like you got better as the season went on last season. Kind of what was coming together for you uh, that enabled you to kind of take off as, as the year went on last year? I mean, coming out of high school, uh, straight into the G League, um, like all you, I feel like all I needed was just reps and then um, – uh, time to really watch film and so uh, as like I just kept playing um, getting used to like the pace um, the NBA game and um, the players that came with it um, you know the, the grown men um, in the league um, 
playing and then reflecting on film and then always just working hard in practice, um, just uh, working my ass off to just get better. Um, all that stuff helped me, definitely. For, for Jalen, when did defense become kind of the, the, the big thing you wanted to hang your hat on in your, in your career? And when did you realize that could be kind of the lane for you as a basketball player? Uh, I, oh, this is loud. Uh, <laughs> I recognized pretty early um, my AAU team. I was with Evan Mobley, Onyeka Kongwu, Johnny Juzang, um, Evan Mobley, Isaiah Mobley. So we were loaded. So there wasn't a lot of shots for me to shoot. So the only way for me to get out there, I had to start picking up 94 four feet in like AAU, which wasn't seen a lot, but it kept me out there on the floor. And I just kept that with me and transitioned it to college. John Krasinski here from The Athletic. Leonard, just, it has been kind of a fast rise for you up through the ranks. Just how have you processed how quickly this has come about and why do you think it is happening for you as, as quickly as it has? I mean, um, you know, it's, I always work so hard and I'm always working towards um, um, these things that's, that's happening to me. And so when it comes, um, I don't really get uh, surprised or I don't really get rattled by it. I just keep working um, uh, towards the next. And um, that's always just been my approach. Um, I just uh, stay level-headed and um, um, don't let it phase me too much. And Jalen, just we know you're recovering from an injury a little bit. What's your mentality like as you get to the NBA here, and how do you plan to attack that process and kind of get back on the court? On the court. Yeah, it's just another stepping stone. I'm not the first one to go through this. Fortunately, there's people that have went ahead and made the return. Kevin Durant, um, Kobe Bryant, all of them had something different about them. Their work work ethic wasn't as normal as other players that haven't came back from it. So I'm just ready to work. It's kind of weird. Like I was telling Tim, like in my ma my mind, I'm walking around here like, okay, we three, four months away from season, but in my body, I'm like seven, eight months away. So yeah, I'm just going to be in here working every day, trying to get started rehabbing tomorrow and just get this process going. Mike Max, WCCO. Tim, you know, we always talk about this compete factor and, you know, who's competitive, who's not. What do you use as a litmus test for that? How do you decide whether somebody's got a compete factor for the NBA? I mean, there's a, you know, it's a, a wide-ranging area where you can kind of quantify competitiveness, but um, what he did on the glass and what um, Jalen did defensively with these guys both trying to jump out of the, off the court with uh, their willingness to happily play a role, um, I think both these guys have really uh, unique skill sets, um, but it's kind of neat to see at such an early age, both of them are self-aware enough to know that in certain areas they can impact the game right away, and certainly with um, their defensive flexibility and the way Leonard rebounded the ball last year against grown men. You know, the, the G League is, is full of grown men, so I think what he did, um, I joke with him, you know, a couple years ago I was not a huge Leonard fan of his game, um, but watching this year, it, it was taken back by his improvement every game. Uh, and again, the coaches, his teammates, they all swore by him, said he was a sponge. He picked up things quickly. And after the All-Star break, I didn't think there was a better, um, you know, a better guy, better big in the G League than Leonard. Dane Moore, Blue Wire. Tim, another question for you. With, with these two and the kind of young core kind of sitting here uh, in front of you, how, how do you feel that this young core can kind of work its way into the, the pre-existing, little bit older core here? How do those two things kind of fuse together over the next few years? Yeah, ideally, you, just, you, know, you keep adding really talented players and, and quality individuals. I certainly check both those boxes. Um, I think with, with the guy, with three guys sitting right here that have been in the gym since the season ended, it's, it's fun to have that youthful exuberance in the building. Um, I think you know, there's no linear path to a perfect roster, but we think if we keep adding guys who can play, who are really good people, who are self-motivated people, who are competitive, who care, um, I think our time will come you know, sooner rather than later. So, again, on Thursday night, we had no expectations to walk with these two guys, and um, we, we felt pretty fired up on Thursday night, and I know these guys are excited to be here. Jace Frederick, Pioneer Press. Leonard, you, you seem to be evolving um, so rapidly right now. Like, do you have any idea in your mind of the player you want to become three, four years from now? Um, I mean, a lot better than I am right now. Um, <laughs> like, I feel like there's no limit to uh, where I can reach in this game. And um, just with continuous growth and just hours that I devote to this game, I just feel like um, I feel like nobody really knows how much better I can get. But I'm just going to keep working towards uh, um, something even greater. And then, Jalen, you talked about the need to be a great defender. What's went into 
becoming that and kind of honing your craft and getting to that point where you're so difficult to score on? Uh, I mean, a lot of it is really God gift. I feel like basketball, I mean, defense and basketball is just if you want to or not. Uh, there's a lot of people that s feel like they need to save their energy on offense and stuff like that, and they just don't devote to it. Uh, I mean, it's easy to when you see a screen to just run into it and say, I got hit. It's hard to go get around it and stay with your defender. So I just have that constant will, and I take it personal. Like, I didn't get scored on very much in college. I never got my ass busted. Like, I wasn't that guy. So um, I know it's going to be different than the NBA. Obviously, you see Steph Curry or somebody like that, that's different. You can just contain those guys. But, like, I just take every person, um, every matchup really personal, whether that's in practice, the G League, or an NBA game. Like, it, it's all the same to me. Jalen, Darren Wolfson from the local ABC affiliate. You touched on your timeline briefly recovering from the Achilles. Can you expound on that? When is it realistic to see you back in the court five on five? Yeah, I really don't know. Uh, every doctor has a different answer. Um, with Tim, I've been fortunate enough. They're not going to rush me back. But um, next year, hopefully, I'll be out on the court. Uh, Britt Robson with Men Post. Leonard, um, earlier in your career, you were profiled as a guard and played like a guard. What was the transition, not only physically, but mentally, to, you know, adopt the skill sets of a big man? Um, I mean, it's nothing to me. Like, um, I could do so much on the court, and to, I just really embrace whatever role my coach gives me. So um, I just go in, um, do what's asked, and I perform the best of my abilities, and I just work hard, and um, I play hard, and um, I bring a tenacity like no other with whatever role I'm given. So to do things like that, um, was truly nothing to me, um, and yeah. Is there anything you don't do as well because you got a lot bigger? Pardon? Is there anything you don't do as well, like maybe your handle or your mechanics of your shot? Is there something that you had to kind of, you know, flex on and, and, and relearn? No, no, I, I feel like there's nothing I had to really relearn. Um, I feel like everything's just solid. And Jalen, you said you, you want to improve your shot. Is that a lot of that is just is it basic mechanics or reps or what is it? Yeah, like growing up, I never really worked on shooting. Uh, at UCLA, I improved every year. From my freshman year, I think I only shot like nine threes like a whole year. Sophomore year, I think I took like 20. And then this year, I took like 60 something. But my percentages kept rising every year from year. So I think the shooting part, um, I already talked to John. I don't know where he is uh, over here. So I'm going to get with him. We're going to be working every day. Like I, if I don't make it, it won't be because I didn't try. Like I'm pouring every ounce of energy I got into this. Ahmad Hicks, Fox 9, a uh, question for Leonard. When you get around guys like Rudy Gobert, Carl Anthony Towns, and Nas Reed, what's something you want to pick their brain about first about how to excel in the NBA? Um, I mean, anything that they really got from me, I'm just willing to listen. Uh, I feel like I don't know everything, so... Uh, whatever they have uh, off the bat, um, I'm just really willing to just hear what they have to say. But uh, guarding, um, ways they could be successful uh, that I can adopt uh, and going into the NBA. And um, rebounding, uh, they're really good rebounders. Uh, add, like, know more uh, about how they rebound so well. Um, I say things like that question for Tim. Uh, would you say that you guys really focus on having a lot of depth at the center position, seeing how you guys have, you know, three centers that may combine to make up for some $90 million this season? What's the addition of Leonard like, you know, for you guys? Yeah, I think I don't really know what position Leonard is. I think to Britt's question, he grew up as a playmaking forward, so I think he can, I know he can guard three positions, and then offensively we'll let uh, Coach Finch determine, like, where he could best be employed. Um, I think what's neat about um, the flexibility of our bigs is, um, you know, while Rudy's a pure five, we have some other guys who can play both the four and the five. Um, you know, offensively, um, we have a bunch of guys that uh, their skill set allows them to do things all over the court that generally most bigs can't. So, um, again, specific to Leonard, um, I guess you're going to figure out what you are. Well, your coach will figure out what you are. But um, I think it's one of the things really exciting about Leonard. We just think he's a basketball player. All right, that concludes the Q&A portion of this press conference. We're going to invite photographers to take pictures of Leonard, Tim, and Jalen for a few moments. So we'll get set up for that.
Sure, yeah.